Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelby This Week. Top news stories we're working on for you. Nick? A new development coming to one of Shelby Township's busiest intersections. Coming up, I'll tell you what's coming to your neighborhood. That story plus major intersection changes and police updates. All those stories and much more, but back to that top news story. New developments have been on the rise in Shelby. Nick Buckler tells us more about the latest site located at 26 Mile Road in Van Dyke. Construction and development is becoming a common trend in Shelby Township, but the southwest corner of 26 Mile Road in Van Dyke is something a little more useful. It's about a 30 acre site and Kroger is one part of it. They're a 123,000 square foot building. That building will be joined by um, an Alta Beauty Supply as well as TJ Maxx. And then there's a fueling station on Van Dyke, which will be part of the development. This development will create more jobs in the township as the shopping center will need employees, which is always a good thing in today's economy. You know, when you look at the Cherry Creek uh, corridor, you add on some other companies, we're looking at more than 500 jobs probably in the next 12 months right here in Shelby Township. So we're excited and uh, we'll see what happens, but I know that 26 mile uh, corner uh, right off of Van Dyke is coming alive and it will be even more live, uh, there'll be more life uh, next year. Developing didn't come without controversy. Residents whose homes will back up to Kroger voiced their concerns that there would be unwanted noise and debris on their property. The Planning Commission has ordered for a six-foot wall and a berm to be installed on the southernmost border in response to these concerns. I want to congratulate Glenn Wynn, our planning director, and Tim Wood, our building director, um, Kroger people, and I really should say the uh, Mr. Churkle and his company have done well, he's the developer, done well working with our Shelby Township people in getting that development underway. Now, Supervisor Stathicus tells me that the area right here at 26 Mile and Van Dyke should be complete by November of 2017, and the Supercenter would be highlighted by a Kroger Superstore. For Shelby This Week, I'm Nick Buckler. Okay, Nick, we all look forward to that new Kroger. Spirits are high in the township as road construction continues. Charlie Cadado tells us more about the state of the construction and how local business owners are keeping a smile on their face. Charlie? It's really inconveniencing a lot of people, but it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. Driving through Shelby Township, you're likely to see a lot of orange and white. It's been construction season for months as Rickman Construction completes the 24-mile road water main project. Well, it's very frustrating for residents here in Shelby Township, and I do appreciate their patience because they have been patient. Supervisor Stathicus says his office gets around 20 calls per day. He says residents with questions or concerns should call the Macomb County Department of Roads. Any kind of road reconstruction is frustrating. There's no question about it. And it's unfortunate we have to do it all at one time. And next year will be much of the same. And not for 24 mile road, but you know, we've got some other projects too. But it's all about keeping the infrastructure, maintaining it and improving it whenever we can. So that's what it's about. Much of the same is no good news for local businesses. Some shops report lower sales this year, but others see a long-term value in this project. They're frustrated, but people in Michigan are usually pretty resilient from the weather and everything. There's always something to talk about. Vitali says the supervisor's office delivered these newsletters to update customers on the construction progress. 24 Mile and Van Dyke was partially closed from October 30 to November 2nd. Despite the backups, Vitali says customers were in and out through the weekend. She wants residents to know construction or no construction, they're open for business. If you're stalled in front of the business, come get a muffalata or get some cannoli or get a cassata cake. Definitely come in because we're open. If you have a question or concern about the latest road construction projects, call the Macomb County Department of Roads at 586-463-8671. For Shelby This Week, I'm Charlie Cadotto. Charlie, that's true. That intersection will be nice for drivers once it's done. Shelby Township hired six new police officers. There was a swearing-in ceremony recently for the new law enforcement officers at the municipal building. Family and friends, along with dignitaries, attended the ceremony. Police are sworn to serve and protect. The six new hires are Jordan Howie, 
Daniel so Rotowski, Andrew Baum, and Autumn Fettig. Each new officer went through a screening process. These new hires all scored the best and will be on the front line for our residents. I'm very appreciative the Board of Trustees authorized these new hires. Uh, the population is growing. We're up to 78,000 residents. We need more officers. This is a great start for us. Jump start for new bodies. And I expect the officers to get trained up and be able to hit the street by, by February. The necessity for new hires? Increase in population. According to the U.S. Census, Shelby Township's population back in 2000 was 65,000 and in 2010 a population of 74,000. A Shelby man is charged in an attempted home invasion. It happened in Dearmorn in mid-October. A woman said she heard someone forcing open the rear sliding door of her home. Once the suspect, identified as Shady bin Ahmad Sami Kareem, saw the woman, she, he ran. Police stopped Kareem a few blocks away and the 27-year-old Shelby Township man was arrested. Police are investigating if Kareem is tied to other home invasions in Dearborn. His bail was set at $20,000 and the judge ordered him to wear a tether if released. Kareem was charged with attempted home invasion, a five-year felony. This is apparently his fourth offense of home invasion. A Shelby man accused of selling fake Eminem Rihanna concert tickets was given an extension on his sentencing, promising to pay the remaining $1,000 he owes in restitution. Thomas Pippa was scheduled to be sentenced this past Wednesday, including full payment of $1,600, but Judge Joseph Toya agreed to delay the sentence after Pippa said he could pay $600 that day and pay the rest by continuing work. Back in September, Pippa pleaded no contest to fraud between $1,000 and $20,000 and fraud between $200 and $1,000, as well as being a four-time habitual criminal. The maximum penalty is 15 years in prison. He will pay the remaining restitution in the next three weeks. Coming up, new reports on a car crash, Shelby's Team Angels, and Girl Scouts Build Up Shelby. Stay tuned. The Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan invite you to Shop Till You Drop on Sunday, November 15th from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Neiman Marcus Last Call Store at Great Lakes Crossing Outlets in Auburn Hills. Receive an additional 20% off their discounted prices and on your entire purchase. Enjoy complimentary wine and hors d'oeuvres, bid on the unique silent auction items, shop, save, and support the kids. 100% of all proceeds go directly to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan. The family of Emmanuel Milaj filed a civil lawsuit from the Stony Creek car crash that killed three young men and injured two others. Emmanuel Milaj was a 17-year-old from Sterling Heights. His family is filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the estate of the driver, Jonathan Manolios, who was driving the car, and his parents, Gregory Bobchik Jr., one of the su survivors, and his parents, as well as the two people who owned the 2008 Jaguar, the car of which the accident happened in. Joe Nara and Greg Bobchik are the only two survivors, and the lawsuit also alleges that Manolios and Bobchik were under the influence while driving the vehicle and accuses parents of negligent supervision. Plus, accusations of Bobchik pulling the steering wheel of the Jaguar, which caused the car to leave the road, strike the guardrail, go down an embankment, which ultimately caused the death of three young men. The case has been assigned to Circuit Court Judge Edward Servito. A gaming crackdown is shrinking pots for charities. The Michigan Gaming Control Board has imposed tough new regulations like limiting gambling hours at poker lounges and requiring more staff to regulate games. Shelby's home to one poker lounge, the River's Edge on Van Dyke near 22 Mile, Two other poker lounges closed their doors recently, Cadas and Snookers. Poker lounges along with different high schools who use the charity poker games to raise money are feeling the pinch. Groups can no longer raise money like they used to at charity games. Shelby TV recently spoke to Richard Calm, the Michigan Gaming Control Board Executive Director. He says the fraud was rampant 
and regulations needed to be enforced. The charities themselves that want to host these events, and, and we're fine with that, we license them to ensure that they operate within the bounds of the law. So we're going to go back and take a look at that also. They have to run their own poker games and charitable games. That's part of their responsibility. But also, they have to fill out their own financial statements, and we have to ensure that going forward that what they spend their money on is, is within the provisions of their you know operating uh, paperwork. In other words, their board of directors meetings and also the mission of their agency. Here's some numbers. $197 million was bet on in 2011, and in 2014 that number dropped to $86 million. That's a $100 million difference. So remember, Big Brother is looking at your Texas Hold'em hand. U.S. Representative Candace Miller was inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame on October 29th. The Hall of Fame honors women from Michigan who have made a lasting cultural impact. Miller began her career as a Board of Trustees member for Harrison Township in 1979. A year later, she was elected as the first woman supervisor of the township. She served there for another 12 years before elected as Macomb Township's treasurer. In 1994, she once again became the first woman in a position after being elected as Michigan's Secretary of State. In 2002, she took office as representative to Michigan's 10th Congressional District in the U.S. House of Representatives, where she still currently serves seven terms later. Team Angels, a local foundation, continues to grow and raise money helping out local cancer patients in every way possible. October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so D. Jolie Salon and Spa helped raise funds from local customers for this great team. Um, during the month of October, um, we decided to um, team up with Team Angels, um, which is my mother-in-law's organization, um, just to raise um, some funds and awareness during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, just um, collecting donations and everything from any client that would like to participate. Jenna and her mother Linda, who owns D. Jolie Salon and Spa, like to get involved in the community just as Team Angels does, help out any way they can. About $300 was raised by D. Jolie patrons and Jenna says the salon will match that $300. All the money will go to help cancer patients. Bundles are for sale. Shelby Township Library Director Katie Esther tells us what kind of bundles. It's almost holiday book bundle sale time again at the Shelby Township Library. Every year we have a wonderful holiday book bundle sale. All year long we prepare for it. Our Friends of the Library volunteers choose books all year long and then about a month before the sale starts they start bundling them in gorgeous packaging with beautiful bows all ready to go for holiday gift giving. They're six dollars a piece and you can find book bundles for bestsellers and mysteries, kids books, teen books. There's something for everyone in the book bundle sale this year. The sale starts on Tuesday, November 17th and lasts until the supplies run out or December 22nd, whichever comes first. We hope to see you at the library for the book bundle sale. Join us for the holidays. At the Shelby Township Library, we have a tradition of a holiday tree trimming. This year, it's Thursday, November 19th, and we'd love for you to join us. This is a great opportunity for families to get together and come out to the library for a wonderful night of cookies, crafts, trimming our tree, holiday music. It's a wonderful opportunity for families to bond and we hope that you join us here at the library. Speaking of those cookies, we really could use some help this year. If you're a baker and would like to donate a batch of homemade cookies to our holiday tree trimming, we'd really appreciate it. To be a holiday cookie volunteer, just call the library's front desk, 586-739. 7414 and sign up to be a cookie volunteer. Thanks in advance. All right, those look like some great bundles. A local Girl Scout troop donated their time and bird boxes to the Shelby Township Nature Center. Troop 30655 recently built 11 new bird boxes that will hang along trails in Shelby. 
Girl Scout Rhea says they donated these new boxes because the old ones needed to be replaced. To help the birds because we knew that these old bird these birdhouses were kind of old and broken. <laughs> so we wanted to make new ones. These bird boxes are a great project for the troop. We're very appreciative of these girls' efforts and they'll be able to come into the park and see eastern bluebirds, which are beautiful birds, appealing birds, and the bird we really have targeted with these nest boxes. We also will get tree swallows and maybe a few other native species, but uh, we really target the bluebird because it has declined in number, and these girls are doing a project and a conservation project all at once. A true learning tool and great lesson for the troop. Student debt at Michigan colleges has been steadily rising. Since 2004, it's increased nearly 60%. A report shows the average 2014 grads in Michigan had $29,000 to pay back in student loans. A decade ago, students were only looking at 18,000. Student debt has become a major policy issue. This debt reflects a shift towards putting more costs on students and less on parents. According to the report, increasing costs and debt levels have been driven by declining state investment in higher education. Per student, state spending has decreased 12 percent, but per student revenue coming from tuition has increased 43 percent. A new school test in Michigan has heads turning. The Michigan Student Test of Educational Progress, or MSTEP, was taken for the first time in the spring and the results are in. Only half of the third graders who took the test passed. Across all other grade levels and subjects, the results were worse. Science, 12% of fourth graders passed. In math, 28% of 11th graders and only 33% of 5th, 6th, and 7th graders passed. But this was expected. This new test was designed to be tougher than the old MEEP exams, requiring students to do more than just fill in the correct bubbles. The test was based on the new Common Core state standards. Michigan also released results from the ACTs taken in March. The average score was 20.2, up from the year's score of 19.8. But these will be the last of the ACTs taken in Michigan. Next year, they will be replaced with the SAT. In health news, Michigan is looking to become the 10th state to phase out products containing plastic microbeads. The Michigan House of Representatives is looking to ban the manufacturing and sale of personal care products like facial cleansers and toothpaste, which contain these beads. The tiny particles used to scrub grime off teeth and skin, but here's the problem. The plastic microbeads are so small, they bypass water treatment facilities and end up in lakes, oceans, and rivers where they stay indefinitely. Toxic contaminants can attach to these beads which are eaten by fish and end up in our food chain. Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin have already banned these microbead products as well as Colorado, California, Connecticut, Maine, Maryland, and New Jersey. And in this week's job hunt, we've got local job opportunities for you right here in Shelby. Jay Marnick, Allstate, is looking for a receptionist. This position includes answering phones, customer service, and processing insurance payments. Candidates can have computer skills and be interested in long-term employment. Next job, Michaels is hiring a part-time acrylic painting and or drawing instructor to teach art classes. Candidates must be able to draw and teach acrylics and use graphite and charcoal as well. Next job, Forey Automation is looking for a mechanical designer for their machines. The job includes mechanical concepts and designs of machines. For more information on that job, visit foreyauto.com. And those are this week's jobs for Shelby TV. For more information on all of those jobs, go to our website, shelbytv.org. We have a road construction update for you. Let's see what's going on with our roads. 22 mile roads now open. It was closed for some road work. So the entire intersection at 22 and Shelby is all open. 
Next, 24 and Van Dyke intersection is open, but lane changes are in effect, so be cautious in that area. Up next, a club is making Shelby look beautiful. We'll tell you more next. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. The Shelby Gardeners Club was outside on a beautiful sunny day recently, getting ready for Christmas. The group of about 15 women worked their green thumbs at the municipal grounds, building huge pots, decorating the beautiful area near Heritage Gardens, filling the containers with birch branches, ostrich ferns, five different kinds of greens, astable, thistle, sedum, and Annabelle hydrangeas. Last year at this time, it was so cold and snowy when the Gardeners Club did this project, the ladies had to literally drill greens into the pots. This year, a warm, sunny, 70-degree day did the club just right. The Gardeners Club always enjoys sprucing up our township grounds. They use extra shrubbery and pine cones they have around their own gardens to spruce up our township. It looks great. And that's Shelby this week. You can watch us online all the time at shelbytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shelbytwptv. Thanks for watching.